pizza. Lead us to a place where all the with your as much an honor of you. Yeah, more honor of you. you that, was a, that was a long one. Yeah, I guess it was, yeah. I don't know how long it was, though. It was pretty long. Was it? Mm-hmm. I don't think it was, I mean, I think you've played longer songs than that. Not sure, but anyway, we'll see if it's something the Jewish is once in a while is nice. All right, so uh, where were we? I don't, um, I don't know. Okay, I don't so. remember. We were talking Peter and Paul, and then you started playing music. Yeah, <laughs> I I really don't remember. Uh, you know, there being any other rift, you know, within the disciples other than Peter and Paul, you know, vying for, you know, who was going to be in charge. Um, other than, you know, you know, doubting Thomas. I don't really think anybody at one point was in charge. I think at, th- at this point, once Jesus was... Um, ascended, once he went up to heaven, I think they just all took their, you know, took it in their own hands. 
Um, right. They did go their own I know, way. Right. I know, like, church, churches were, were built and, and temples were built and just pretty much everybody went their own way. I mean, they had no, they didn't have anybody to tell well, them the only, where to go or what to the, do. But the only problem that there was, really, when you think about it, is that, you know, uh, Peter was saying one thing and Paul was saying something else, you know, as far as... Right, and I think, and I think at, this, at that point, Peter had his own people that followed him and Paul had his own people. And I think that's where, it, where the different sets would the schism, start. Yeah, like, where, the, where the schism comes in, because... Uh, exactly. Paul, Paul was saying that it's okay for Gentiles to sit at the same table as Jewish Christians, and Peter said, "No, you can't have that." What's a Jewish Christian? Right. A Jewish Christian is a Jew who follows Jesus. At first, you know, when Jesus was preaching, he was preaching to the Jewish population, mm-hmm. and later on. You know, it was sort of his disciples sort of opened it up to Gentiles, you know, non-Jews, um, non-Jews that believe in Jesus, which what today what today is called uh, Jews for Jesus. You know, you got the born again that I don't know what they really believe in. Then you got the Jews for Jesus that no, I you see, would they, my, believe in. You see, my, sis- my sister is a Jew for Jesus, but she has accepted Christ as her personal Savior. So I don't know how that really works. I mean, this is I what- don't either, and I have a cousin that, that is like that, too. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure. She believes I mean, in- they don't go to church like I do. They don't convert like I did. You know, I went the whole nine yards. I mean, I've been baptized. I received communion. I was confirmed. So now every week when I go to church, I go up and I I receive the host. Well, you see, not not every Christian, you know, goes up to receive the host because I remember. Well, you have to post them until you. I mean, you have to, like I said, you have to be baptized, but you also have to go to confession. Well, that's You're the thing. You're supposed to go to confession, I think, one of my, every week. Or... One of the guys I worked with who became uh, a principal, I remember going to a funeral with him of uh, a colleague's husband. And afterwards, at the end, of course, the priest asked those who wanted to receive Holy Communion to step up. And a bunch of people did. And I said to Jimmy, I said, how come you're not going up there? He said because he doesn't go to confession, his wife goes to confession. He said if Jesse, Jesse was his wife, he said if Jesse was here, she would get up and receive the host. He said it would be hypocritical of me to receive the host because I don't go to confession on a regular basis. He said I don't remember right. when the last time was that I went to confession. Listen, if everybody went to confession, the priest would never have a minute of a free time. Oh, sure they would, because you can only say confession at certain times during the week on certain days. You know, there's not always somebody sitting in I the said, confessional. If everybody came in to say confession. They don't have a confessional booth. Well, they would limit you to two minutes apiece, you know. Yeah, but if you have no, they minutes. actually don't. They'll, they'll let you, they let you well, at least in my church, they'll sit in there... As long as you want. We well, have a confessional room. We have two rooms. And you have a choice of either kneeling down and being behind the, sh- the, the shade or whatever it is. Or there's a chair and you can sit side by side face to face with the priest. Well, I think some of the... I, I guess old-fashioned Catholics would prefer the anonymity, even though if, you know, if they go to confession on a regular basis, chances are if they confess to the same priest all the time, the priest knows the voice. All right. Yes! 
sorry. I know. All right. Marty St. Louis against his old team. And it's a power play goal. So it looks at least at least go to six games. Well, now they're all tied up at yeah. two apiece, and they go back to the garden on Sunday, which is always a good sign. It's a great sign. Well, the Rangers have the best road record of any team in the league. So for them... But they've always had a problem with Tampa Bay. It doesn't... Well, Tampa Bay is a tough team. I mean, Washington was tough, but... If you take away Ovechkin, Wash, you know the only the, he he was the thorn in their side. He scored most of right. the Washington goals. Tampa Bay can get you in so many different ways, and that's what they've been saying. You know, aside from Johnson with his hat trick and about fifteen mm-hmm. goals so far in in the playoffs. You know, I mean, the guy's phenomenal. He's having a great playoff. Yeah, which because. My my brother and I are going at each other because he he's down there. He he became a Tampa Bay Lightning fan. I I don't know where this came about, but I mean he'll he'll text me or he'll Facebook me, and I won't even answer him because <laughs> the, you know he you know he's trying to like get me riled up, and I'm like I'm not worried. I'm not worried. You know. Well, you know. So. I- I have to tell you, if you now I know you watched the game from the beginning. If you listened in the first mm-hmm. period, there were a lot of people saying, "Let's go Rangers," because Tampa Bay, you know, you you have a lot of uh, tri-state area people, Connecticut, Jersey, and New York. Okay, living in Tampa Bay, Orlando, that general area, you know, so you know they're still Ranger fans. Oh, I know it, but my brother, for some reason, my brother was never a Ranger fan. As a matter of fact, I think growing up, I think he liked the Islanders. Well, we don't yeah, even talk about that. Yeah, I'm not mistaken, he was an Islander fan. Well, now and I don't they're know be why. Called, I mean. Now they're going to be called the Brooklyn something or other. I don't know. No longer uh, Islanders, yeah, that's it's, for sure. That's right. So why don't you like the Islanders? I never liked cool. the Islanders. I was always a Ranger fan. You know, it's like Islander fans are usually Jet fans, and they're usually Mets fans. Mm-hmm. Giant, Giant fans are Yankee fans and Ranger fans. That's generally how it's divided, with the exception of that's a few it. here or there. That's exactly that's, how it's divided. At least that's what I've always, you know, seen and felt. You know. No, you're right. you're absolutely right. I mean, it's it's true. I mean, I grew Nixon up and that's fitted. liking the Rangers, liking the Yankees. Um, like I said, football. I'm not really. You know, I don't have a, a team that I like. I mean, yeah. If I have to choose between the Giants and the Jets, I would probably go more Jets. I'm sorry, more Giants than Jets. Well, also because um, you live on Staten but yeah, Island, no, I, and it's right over the bridge. You know, the Meadowlands. What? The Meadowlands. Yeah, but keep in mind, I was brought up in Brooklyn. I was born and raised in Brooklyn. I, I know. I just moved know. to Staten Island uh, in the year 2000. I've lived in Brooklyn my whole entire life. Yeah. Well, born well, and well, raised in Chief Fede. I could the, uh, I could tell from the accent. No, who do you like better? Than <laughs> As you could probably tell from mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who do you like better, the Knicks? I don't have an Knicks? accent. I tell that to everybody. Everybody tells me what strong accent I have, and I I don't I don't know. Maybe because I don't hear it the way everybody my else father, does. My, my father used to joke about that. My father had a definite Brooklyn accent, more or less, and he would say, "No, everybody else has an accent. I don't have an accent." You know. <laughs> Well, I have the look. That I'll, I'll I'll say I do have the look. And Felix, do I have that Brooklyn look? Yep, yep, you do. I'm that tough girl from Brooklyn. You can, you know, you can take me out of Brooklyn, but you can't take Brooklyn out of me. Oh, are you are you one of the uh, pink ladies from uh, Saturday Night Fever? 
You mean from 